He ran, puffing and puffing. All he could do was run. The monster was behind him, and he knew it. That he was getting tired. His side flared with pain from running so fast and so long. Soon he wouldn't be able to keep running anymore. He turned the corner, then skidded to a stop. Panic flared through him. No. No, not at that end. He turned, but saw the monster already blocking the way out. It was huge and terrifying. Teeth that dripped slime, and grasping hands tipped with deadly claws. He could already imagine how it would feel to have them rip and tear into his flesh. The monster lunged for him, and he ducked back against the wall, raising his hands to protect himself. He knew that this was the end. He knew that he would never make it out alive. And suddenly he felt a surge of power in his soul, racing into his arms. He lashed out at the monster without thinking. There was a green light, and... A young man bolted awake, sitting straight up out of his bed. He looked down at his hands, thrust them straight out in front of him, vestiges of green light fading away. Pushing one of those hands through his spiky orange hair, he looked around, relieved to be surrounded by the comfort of his own bedroom. It had simply been a nightmare. Sighing and shaking his head, he untangled himself from the sweat-soaked sheets and dropped his bare feet to the floor, equally relieved to feel the carpet and not bare pavement under them. He padded near silently to the bathroom and turned on the tap, splashing water on his face to wash away the last traces of the dream. Dream. <laughs> More like a memory. He shook his head at the thought, spoken aloud. He would never forget that day. It was the first thing he could remember, running down that back alley, chased by a monster. A monster only he could see, in a twisted, distorted version of reality. He shook his head again. Put yourself together, Neku. Long day ahead of you. He glanced at the clock. It was 6 a.m., which meant he had no more time for sleeping in. Well... That settles it then. Time to face the day. Philadelphia, the modern and bustling city. Never heard of it? That's alright. It's probably fairly close to you, though you've likely never been there. It's a city that attracts both the perfectly ordinary and the perfectly extraordinary. Nominee Divine thought about this as the bus that carried her to a new life rolled through the countryside. Farmdon. Farmdon. All passengers exiting at Farmdon. Please gather up your baggage. Next stop, Philadelphia. Next stop, Philadelphia. The blonde sighed, pushing a strand of hair out of her blue eyes. As the bus came to a halt, she stood, letting the person beside her exit. She was glad to finally stretch her tired muscles, and she rubbed the sore spot that had been growing in her back over the past several hours. As her companion left, she slid back down, taking the window seat. I wonder what it would be like. She leaned on her elbow, watching out the window as the bus moved on. Moving was always bittersweet, but this was far more than just moving to Miss Divine. She glanced down at the letter, still crumpled in her hand. Here is a one way ticket on the Greyhound out of town three days from now, going to the city of Philadelphia. 
I asked someone to meet you there at the station. His name is Neku. He'll take care of you. You won't be able to miss him. If you're really serious about starting over, about learning who you really are, you'll take this chance and you'll never look back. I know you can do this, now, Mei. Sign, Mr. H. The answers are all there. In Urban Delphia. You told me. But what if you're wrong? What if I never find them? What if I don't want to know? She shook her head, violently, as if to clear of bad memories. No! I can't give up now. I will find the answers I'm looking for. As the city came into view, she nodded. She had made her decision. Whatever is waiting for me, it can't be worse than what I left behind. It's late. Nick stood at the Urbadelphia bus station. Tapping his foot slightly faster than the beat of the music escaping his headphones. He barely noticed the people staring at him. He was used to the odd looks, though, with his antisocial fashion choices and widely spiked bright orange hair. He was looking for someone a lot more subtle than he usually was. A girl getting off a Greyhound bus, according to his message he received anyway. He pulled out his phone and glanced at the text again. Hey Neku, send Prospect your way. Her name is Nomine. She's a sweet girl. You'll like her. Or not. Just... <clears throat> anyway, she uh, got into some trouble back home and is looking for a new start. You and the rest of the Watchers will take care of her. She'll be arriving on Saturday by the 1215 Greyhound from New York City. Told her to meet you there. Stay out of trouble, Mr. H. P.S. Seriously, stay out of trouble. <sighs> if you're gonna meddle like this, why don't you just do it yourself? He glanced at the clock on his MP3 player. The bus was about 10 minutes late, and it was making everyone nervous. But no more than him. Call him paranoid. But Neku usually expected the worst to happen, and has saved his life more than once. Still, this time at least, his fears were unfounded. The bus pulled in, finally, and began admitting passengers. He kept his eye out for anyone who looked like a... nominee. Scanning the crowd emerging from the bus, the timid-looking blonde in the white tank top and jeans immediately caused attention. She looked underfed and tired, and she was clinging to the overstuffed suitcase she carried like it was the only lifeline. She definitely looked like the kind of person who had been in trouble. But there were others who fit that description, others that looked more capable of taking care of themselves. Like the other blonde with the short hair and ripped clothes, who walked with a kind of weary confidence. Maybe that was Namine. Or the redhead with the stuffed pig doll. Nominee. Nominee. Where are you? Damn it, Mr. H. You should have at least given me a description to go off of. I'm not supposed to know which one's nominee. Um, excuse me? He spun around his heels, ready to fight as someone tapped his shoulder. But it was the timid-looking blonde girl. He relaxed slightly, taking a deep breath. Are, are you Neku? Uh, um, yes? She smiled suddenly, her tired eyes brightening and her hands coming up in front of her, her fingertips meeting in an odd gesture. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> right on my first try. My name's Nomine. I was told you were here to meet me? You're Nomine. Um, yes? Is there a problem? Her head tilted to the side and she looked nervous again, losing some of the charm and gaining back some of the fear he'd seen in her earlier. He marveled how quickly she could change her face. No, not not at all. It's I just wasn't exactly expecting someone like you is all. <clears throat> so, um, Mr. H told me you were here to start a new life. Do you mind if I ask what brings you to Abadelphia and and also to well us? I have my reasons. Is it even really safe to talk about? Wow. Well, that. Out here? In broad daylight? In public? Nobody's listening. Uh, trust me. Welcome to the big city. But you come from New York, right? You should know that already. I hopped the bus for New York. <laughs> but I'm actually from a small town nearby. Uh, anyway, uh, either way, um, do you mind if we go someplace else? Preferably someplace I can drop my stuff? Uh, didn't Mr. H set you up with an apartment? He said I should stay at the, uh, safe house. Ah, uh, well, 
I can take you there. It, it, it's not too far. Suddenly, with no warning, the air shifted around the two. A subtle but terrifying shift that couldn't be ignored. The sound of cracking pavement and creaking metal could be heard as the bus station quickly changed from a normal urban site to a hellish dimension. The windows of the main building seemed to crack and grow eyes. The area isolating itself from safety and suddenly becoming surrounded by a gaping chasm. Ah! No! It's happening again! Shit! The two of them were nearly alone. All of the normal people were suddenly gone, leaving only a few stragglers behind. The woman with the short blonde hair was one of them. She seemed to crumple to the ground, her confident demeanor shaken. A tear opened in front of the two of them, and a horrifying creature began to push its way through. It had six limbs, walking on four and using the last two as grotesque arms. Each leg ended in a long, wicked claw, and the two arms had spindly fingers that also ended in claws. Its face looked like it had belonged to an animal with a short muzzle, but it also had the clicking mandibles of an insect and twisted horns. Its skin was hard, glossy shell stacked into thousand interlocking plates. Demon. Do you think we can... Do you think we can beat it? The crossings cut us off. We have to be able to. People can get in. Maybe, but we sure can't get out. Ever since that day, four years ago, Neku had been seeing them. The monsters called demons and the hellish crossings they caused when they tried to force their way into our world. Namine too had seen the monsters before. It was what set them apart. Made them unique. They were otherborn. Let's do this! Neku let out a yell as his hands became enveloped in a powerful green light. A light that extended what seemed like blades as he rushed the monster. He sliced at it, scoring a gash into its arm before rolling away from a swipe of its claws. Be careful! The armor's really tough! Try to notice that. He shrieked in rage and leapt from the hole, revealing what had been concealed on the other side. A long barbed tail, dripping sickly poison. Oh, this is gonna suck. As the monster turned its attention to him, Neku rolled out of the way, concentrating on a piece of dislodged rubble as he did so. With a flick of his <sighs> hand, he brought the large shard of asphalt up to block the demon's strike. It broke in half, but he was able to get away. Are you okay? I practically do this for a living. Go help the other girl. Right! Neku dashed in for another strike, trying to find a weak point in the creature's armor. His force blades glanced off once again, and the creature gave a cry of frustration. It had swiped the claw of Neku, but the boy had already rolled back away. Namine, meanwhile, was kneeling next to the cowering woman. She placed a hand on her shoulder. Hey! Hey, are you alright? I... I can't... I can't stop it. Don't be afraid. That crew will take care of it. Are you... real? As real as you are. Come on, let's get inside the station. It's still crossed over, but at least we'll be safe there. The other woman looked up at the building and gave a shudder as she caught sight of the eyes reflecting in the windows. Safe? As safe as it gets! Come on, before more of them come through! Nominee tugged slightly on the other blonde's hand, encouraging out of the way of the fight. They ran around the outside of the battleground to the door, a few more stragglers taking the opportunity to follow them. The demon was too distracted by Neku's constant attacks to notice the rest of its prey escaping. They made it without any further complications. Now when they slammed open the door, ushering the remaining few people into the station. The other blonde was the last to go in, helping Nominee Shepard frighten people in. <sighs> Thanks! No. No, thank you. For a moment, I... I understand. Don't worry. I'm Nominee, by the way. I am. I am Bray. Nominee nodded, then turned back to the door. Neku! Everything's clear! Right. Now that he didn't have to worry about civilians, Neku stopped fighting defensively. Crazy risks were a bad idea when you have no clue if a stray enemy strike is going to take out someone you're trying to protect. Now that he was alone, he started testing the enemy more. He landed blow after blow, still leaving not so much as a dent in the creature's armor. He growled in frustration as a claw whooshed past him, nearly taking his head off. He was tiring out, slowing down. His power took energy, something he was quickly running out of, and it wasn't doing any sort of good at all. Any minute, and more demons would be pouring through the tear between worlds, and there was nothing he could do about it. The creature roared, and he looked up, only to see that the envenomed stinger descending on him at lightning speed. He'd been careless, standing still too long. As tired as he was, as fast as he was going, there was no way he could dodge it in time. He threw his hands up and closed his eyes, attempting to throw the stinger away with his mind, knowing in his heart it was futile. No! Nominee's yell was accompanied by a burst of light and heat. A jumbled rush of emotions, fear, anger, sadness rushed through him, along with a tumble of rushing words and voices. And then, for just a moment, a blissful release in the form of absolute stillness. After that moment was over, the creature screamed in agony.
Neko opens his eyes in time to see Naomune, standing in front of him with her arms out, as if to stop the blow herself. The creature was gone, the last remnants of it burning away to ash. Naomune stood, just like that, frozen for a single moment, before crumpling to the ground, energy spent. The world lurched, and the brakes in the road rushed back together again, everything returning to normal. Neku knelt down next to the fallen Naomune, checking her pulse and listened for breathing. She was still alive, just passed out. He gave a sigh of relief. It was going to be a chore to get her and her luggage back to the safe house, but she at least survived whatever she had done. As he got things ready to go, Neku's mind drifted. Otherborn, those who could see the demons and the crossings they created, bound by some threat of fate to the other world, where the monsters called home. All of them had special gifts. Neku's force blades and his ability to move things with his mind were the gifts bestowed by his bond with the other plane. Using those gifts, and most of his kind fought the demons and prevented them from fully crossing over into the human world. Neku's gifts were strong even among otherborn. And yet, Naminé had destroyed a demon whose armor even his own powers couldn't pierce with a single blow. The rush of emotions, the jumble of words he had felt and heard. Had her outburst caused those too? Mr. H. Just, just who is this girl? 